Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God is good. And all the time. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you in the house of God on his holy day, which I believe has just begun. God made seven days. He only blessed one. He made seven days. He only sanctified and hallowed one. He made seven days. He rested on one. Because he rested on the seventh day, he blessed it. And he has asked us who are made in his image to behave the way he behaves. He worked six days. He rested one day. We are to work six days and rest one. But more particularly, he worked six days and rested the seventh, not a seventh. A seventh is not the seventh. Wednesday can be a seventh. You're not with me. Here are seven days. Any one of those days can function as a seventh day because it is a seventh part of seven days. But only one can function as the seventh day. And so the Bible is clear constantly over and over, God rested on the seventh day, not a seventh day, as some people seem to suggest when they want to do whatever they want. It is my high honor to be with you this evening. Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. I've often said a major part of God's religion is common sense guided by the Spirit of God. Plain and simple, honest common sense. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, we come into your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for life you've preserved. We thank you for shelter, for food. We thank you for the way you provide, dear God. As we bow before you, if we have sinned, forgive us, Father. Cover us in the blood of your Son, not to hide our sins, but to wash them away. Grant us your Spirit, that he may guide me and those listening into the path of truth. And Father, as we hear the truth, Open our hearts to receive it and to walk in it. Bless those watching online. We thank you for their presence, dear God. Particularly those who were not Seventh-day Adventists. Grant them a very, very special blessing so that they may desire to worship with us again. Bless this nation. Bless the leaders of this nation, dear God. In all that they do, remind them that righteousness exalteth the nation. Bless every nation represented by those watching. Now, dear God. Speak through me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. What's our subject? Seeing is not believing. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Where is your clock? I won't hold you long tonight. Where's the clock? I, oh, I can, that looks like, is that 7.30? Is that what that says? All right, I should release you by 8 o'clock. What book did I say? What chapter? 11. Let's read verse 6. Hebrews 11, reading verse 6, and I read from the King James Version of the Bible. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Now, this is non-negotiable must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, go to Romans chapter 10. Let's read verse 17. Romans 10, 
Reading verse 17, our subject, seeing is not believing. Romans chapter 10, reading verse 17. If you found that, say amen. So then faith cometh how? By hearing, finish the verse, and hearing by the word of God. You cannot separate faith from the word of God because faith is our response to the word of God. To believe in God is to believe what the word says about God because outside of the word, we know nothing about God. Let me say it again. To believe in God is to believe what the word says about God. And so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've looked at two Bible texts. What was the first one? Hebrews 11 verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. There's no negotiation. You must believe that God is who he says he is and he says who he is in the word. All right. We've also read that along with Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, which tells us we must believe God is who he is. We read another verse. What verse was that? Romans chapter verse 17. Though then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And putting the two together, I concluded that faith is our response to what God says. Now you may say, faith is our response to God, and you're right. But the only way to respond to God is to respond to thus saith the Lord. You cannot remove the word of God when discussing faith. All right, let's look at something else again regarding faith. Let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5, reading verse 7, our subject, seeing is not believing. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Do we have that? Read with me if you have my version. For we walk by not by now for we walk by faith not by sight in other words we are to see not with these we are to see with the eye of faith but we discovered from Romans 10 17 faith cometh by hearing come on and hearing by the word of God. So to walk by faith and not by sight is to walk by what the Bible says regardless of what your eyes may show you. Now your eyes show you every Sunday, most Christians going to church on Sunday. That's what your eyes show you. But the word of God says the seventh day. That's how you have to walk. You have to walk by faith despite what your eyes may show you. If that's clear, say amen. Having said that, let's go to John chapter 20. John 20. We read from verse 24. Our subject seeing is not believing. John chapter 20, reading from verse 24. Let me pray again. Holy Father in heaven, as I continue speaking for you and to your people, bless me with simple language and light. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus had appeared to the disciples who were hiding in the upper room because they were afraid the Jews might do to them what they did to Jesus. But when Jesus appeared the first time, Thomas was not present. Now, verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. Finish that verse. I will not believe. What does Thomas say? I must see. But the Bible says we're to walk out by faith, not by sight. 
In other words, we must walk according to thus saith the Lord, not what we see all around us. So Thomas said, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. In other words, I need to see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, or touch it in order to believe. Now, Let's go to verse 26. And after eight days again, the disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus to those being shut and stood in the midst and said unto them, and said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to whom? To Thomas. Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach into thy hands and thrust it into my side. Now finish that verse. And be not faithless, come on, but believing. Now Jesus is telling Thomas, because you depended on your senses to believe, you are faithless. Because we are to walk how? By faith, not by sight. Thomas wanted to walk by sight and by hearing and smelling and tasting and touching. He wanted the proof of Christ's resurrection to be based on what his senses told him, not on thus saith the Lord. And so Jesus said, be not faithless, but believing. And he answered and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen with these, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. What's the subject? Seeing is not believing. Because Thomas wanted to see in order to believe and Jesus told him you are faithless. We are to see with the eye of faith. Thus saith the Lord, regardless of what's going on in society, in our area, or globally, we are to live by, thus saith the Lord. Now, having said that, let's apply it particularly to Seventh-day Adventists, the Sabbath-keeping people of God. Go to Genesis 1. Our subject, seeing is not believing. Genesis 1. We read from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Read the next statement of verse 3. And God said. One of my favorite verses in all the Bible is Genesis 1-3. And God said. Let there be light, come on, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, look at the first day of creation. To which of the five senses does that day of creation appeal? The sense of sight. Come on, the sense of sight. What did God make? Light. Do we see the light? Yes. But can you also feel heat from the light? Yes or no? Yes, you can feel heat from the light. And so it appeals to two senses. The sense of sight, what are the sense? Yeah, of touch or feeling. So the, the senses are satisfied to some degree by what was made on the first day. I can see the light. I can feel it. That sounds like Thomas. Are you following me? Let's go to day number two, verse six. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. To what sense does the second day of creation appeal? Come on, talk to me. To what sense? Which of the five senses particularly? Sight. When you walk out tonight, look up. What will you see? The stars. 
during the day what do you see the sun the blue sky the second day of creation gives evidence that appeals to one of our senses at least sense of sight let's go to day three verse 11 and god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass now to which sense does the third day of creation appeal or to which senses come on sight you see the grass what else do you walk on the grass what sense is that touch or feeling can you smell vegetation can you smell the flowers yes so the third day of creation appeals to the sense of sight, the sense of touch, the sense of smell. Let's go to day number four, verse uh, 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. All right. We have sun, moon, and stars. Which senses are affected? Come on. Sight? Uh-huh. Come on. Sun, moon, and stars. What senses are affected? Light? Let's say it's midday and you're in the heat. You feel it. Are you with me? You feel the sun's heat. So on the fourth day of creation, your senses can respond. You feel the heat. You see the light. You see the stars at night. Let's go to day five, verse 20. And God, let me pray again. Fathers, I continue. Please grant me more wisdom. For your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and god created great wells and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind now tell me the senses you can use to appreciate the fifth day of creation sight what else come on hmm? hearing i was in a hotel in uganda several years ago it was a small hotel. I was on the third floor. Right above me was the roof. Now, in Kampala, there are birds called marabou storks. I don't know if you've ever seen them. Do you have them in, maybe they're in Kenya too, I think. There may be a few. They're beautiful when they fly, but absolutely ugly when they're walking on the ground. But they're huge birds. And there was a bird sitting on the roof right above my head. They are huge birds. Then the bird took off. And I heard, oh, whoosh, oh, whoosh, oh, whoosh. The wings were so powerful. I heard the bird before I saw it then I saw it day five the birds the fish you're from Kenya part of Lake Victoria belongs to you and they go fishing am I right am I wrong you see the fish you see the birds sense of sight you can hear them and when they eat, when they come out of your pot you can taste them are you following me okay let's go to day six <laughs> verse 24 and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Pause. Again, I'm speaking to Kenyans, Masai Mara, Amboseli, Savo East, Savo West. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Okay. You see the animals. You hear them. People travel miles to go see them. I was in Zimbabwe a few years ago and I went to a lion park. There were about 150 lions, 135. And at one point as I was walking around, about 30 of them began to roar at the same time. Mm. The ground was shaking. I felt it in my bones. And I'm so glad they were behind a fence. I saw them. I heard them. If a skunk goes by, you don't only see it and hear it, what else happens? You smell it. So day six, you can interact with day six with the senses. From day one to day six, the senses can come into play to interact with God's creation. Now, let's go to chapter two of Genesis. Let's read from verse one. Our subject, seeing is not believing. 
Genesis 2, reading from verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and did what? Sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now listen to me carefully. Which of the five senses enables you to interact with the Sabbath day? Can you see the holiness of the day? Don't break my heart like that. Can you see the holiness of the day? No. Can you see the sanctifying that God put on it? No. Can you see the rest? No. What can you see? Now the Bible says he sanctified it. He blessed it. Now you've got to believe that without seeing anything, hearing anything, smelling, tasting, or touching. All you have is what he said. Are you with me? Now for the other six days, you can see the light. Well, what he said must be true. There's the light. There's the grass. There are the animals. There are the fish. There's the bird. They are the stars. But on the seventh day, you cannot see the blessing. You cannot see the sanctifying. You cannot see the rest. What you have to do is conclude, if what he said about the first day was true, and I saw the evidence, are you following me? Then what he said about the seventh must be true, even though I cannot see it, or hear it, or smell it, or taste it, or touch it. A Sabbath keeper lives how? By faith. Seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing with the eye of faith. Are you following me? Thomas wanted to see before he believed. Christ said that's faithless. I want you to believe what you cannot see. Simply because I had said over and over. I will rise again. Thomas should have lived by thus saith the Lord, which is the only way to live by faith. My brothers and sisters, you and I right now are observing a day that we say to be holy and we cannot point to the holiness. We say God made trees on the third day, there are trees outside. God made light on the first day, there's light of some kind in this building. And several hours later, light will come again when the sun rises. But the seventh day Sabbath, there is nothing about the five senses that can tell us, yes, the day is blessed, the day is sanctified. We have to take God at his, come on, word. So we have to live by faith. A Sabbath keeper, when he or she understands Sabbath keeping is an act of faith. Because you're accepting and living by a statement you cannot prove. You have to accept it because of who said it. And if what he said on the first day was right because I have some evidence. And the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Surely he's a consistent God. What he says about the seventh must also be true. And so when we order our lives in such a way as to preserve the holiness of the Sabbath, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That is an act of faith because we have accepted it is holy because he said so, even though we have no evidence that satisfies the senses. A Sabbath keeper, a true Sabbath keeper, not simply someone who stays away from work, because all unemployed people do not work on Sabbath. Are you following me? That does not make them Sabbath keepers. Are you with me? A true Sabbath keeper is someone who lives by faith. I can't see it. But he said so. I cannot smell it. But he said so. I cannot taste it. But he said so. I cannot hear it. But he said so. I cannot feel it. But he said, so all I have is thus saith the Lord. And so when you and I say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, 
thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days, and we have visual evidence of that, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And we believe that because he said so. And who was that who said so? The man who said, let there be light, and there was light. Let the earth bring forth grass, the grass came. Let there be lights in the firmament, the lights came. He is the one who said, the seventh day is holy, and we accept it because we have evidence based on the prior six days that what God says is absolutely reliable. My brothers and my sisters, God has called you and me to be Sabbath keepers. Of the Ten Commandments, that one requires faith above any other. You know, Ella White saw the Ten Commandments in heaven. She was taken there by Christ. He was her guide. And he lifted the ark in heaven and showed her the Ten Commandments. You read that in early writings. She saw all ten. All ten had a light. The light on the first four was brighter than the light around the next six. The Sabbath had something none of the other commandments had. It had a halo. That is the commandment that proves our loyalty. This was the commandment Christ used to test the obedience of the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And this is the commandment that will test us when the Sunday law is passed. In preparation for that, and it's coming, let's remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That faith we exercise in the word of God, let us apply that faith to everything we do. When the Bible says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, they will, that they may be meet in my house, and prove me now here with saved the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. We ought to believe that with all our hearts and souls, because the one who said that was the one who said, let there be light. And there was exactly what he said, there was light. How many of you will say with me, Father, help me to live by faith and to demonstrate by faith by keeping your Sabbath holy. Can I see your hand? Stand up with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you today, God, that to every person who comes into this world, that person comes with a measure of faith that you have given, but that faith must be used. We thank you for creation week. We thank you for the six days of creation and the visual and the auditory and the tactile evidence we have, but we thank you more so for the day that requires great faith, the Sabbath day. We accept its holiness just because you said so. We accept it is sanctified just because you said so. Dear God, in all that we do, remind us that we are to walk by faith, not by sight. Bless us, I pray. Put a double blessing on our children. Watch over us tonight. Bless your online people, I pray. Bring us back tomorrow to hear your word again. I pray in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you.